Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Clearly. Okay, thank you. My name is Adora Kenze, and um, I currently serve as the head of public policy for Western Central Africa for Facebook. And I have been in this role for um, a little over three years now. Um, my background is very eclectic. I have degrees in law and international relations. I have worked um, in Nigeria and in Europe and in the US uh, with both the private sector and um, international agencies or in international organizations. Um, I've worked in philanthropy with the Global Front for Women. I've worked at, as a political analyst for the Commonwealth Secretariat in London. I've um, done consultancies with national agencies in Nigeria, like NEMASA. Um, I worked for the World Bank. So my, um, I, now that I'm, as I'm reciting it, it sounds a little bit irresponsible, <laughs> but uh, there has been, to a certain extent, method to my madness. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's really, in a nutshell, my background. And I'm happy to uh, speak a little bit more about the trajectory and the choices I made and how I got there as we get into the conversation. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much um, for that. I think mm. that was quite interesting. Uh, I think you're the first one who's had like a very, <laughs> I wouldn't say random trajectory to where you <laughs> it would be interesting to, to learn a bit more on how you got to where you, you are at the moment. Thank you for that. Um, so the next person, next resource person will be Antonia. Um, who is the regional director for um, West Africa for Business Sweden. Um, over to you, Antonia, just brief introduction about yourself and um, what you do at the moment as well. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Toby. Uh, my name is Antonia Adenaya Iwa. I'm currently uh, based in uh, Casablanca, Morocco, uh, working for Business Sweden, which is a trade uh, organization for Sweden helping to promote trade uh, and investment, both in Nigeria, but also West Africa and uh, in Africa generally. Um, similar, I don't know if, if this is the usual way, but quite similar to Adora, my, my uh, um, background has, was also very random. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I was very much focused on law. So I studied law in the University of Lagos uh, then international relations in Benin, uh, and and they did later on uh, worked with uh, GT Bank uh, as a, a retail product manager for the all, all of uh, Nigeria. Um, worked in oil and gas, gas as uh, a consultant uh, um, and uh, outsourcing personnel as well. Uh, worked uh, later as well. Um, uh, in um, beauty, you know, I was a licensed esthetician uh, doing facials, massage, uh, skincare, uh, consultations and all that. Um, and eventually decided that international uh, career is basically what I wanted to pursue. Uh, um, and um, um, started working with the French uh, and right now working with the Swedes. And I've been working with the Swedes uh, since um, 2012, uh, very much focused on uh, West Africa, started in Nigeria, uh, worked uh, briefly in, uh, uh, with some short term uh, exchanges in Kenya, South Africa, several, several of, um, African countries in Europe and now back again in Africa, but very much focused on West Africa. So uh, I, I guess, um, Again, there, there is always a reason for most of the changes uh, that I would be very happy to discuss as well later. Uh, but, you know, when you know you're on the right track later, uh, the, the decision to make the right decision and change and take that bold step is, I think, is the most important. And, and, and I think that was what uh, I was able to do. And I, I haven't regretted that to date. Very interesting. <laughs> I think I um, obviously I've worked with you in the past, so I know a bit of your background, but it's quite interesting to know um, that you sort of had several different professions before you ended up 
where you are. I'll, I'll be interested to know a bit more as well, Antonia. Yeah, but thank you for that introduction. Um, and then we'll move on to Choma Opara, who is the sales director, uh, Middle East and Africa um, at SI Power Systems AB, um, just to give a brief introduction as well. Um, Choma, over to you. Thank you very much, Toby. And thank you, Heda Beautiful Hand, for having us here today. Indeed, an honor. It's, it's funny, uh, just to reference what I have said. Um, the fact that both of you have a background in international relations, that was my dream course to study. But as we meet with Nigerian parents, you have to be an engineer or a pharmacist. So I ended up studying petroleum engineering. So I, my background, I have a bachelor's in petroleum engineering. Um, I haven't worked today in, a, you know, in any of the chevrons or all of that, but it's actually has helped me in a lot of the jobs I've had looking back now. Um, okay, back to my career. Um, I worked with the Swedish Trade Council. It, it's, um, it's Business Sweden now, but it used to be called the Swedish Trade Council. And there, um, our job was to support Swedish companies looking to establish their companies or presence in Sub-Saharan Africa. And I was there supporting companies from everything from market analysis to partner searches to recruitment and so on. And from there, I was actually headhunted from one of my clients, and that is the company that I have worked with now since 2012. So I transitioned from management consulting with the Swedish Trade Council to um, right now I'm the sales director for as part of the team covering Middle East and Africa, um, selling power solutions for telecoms towers. So I had absolutely no background or experience in telecoms, made the switch and have been there now for, um, what is that, eight years? Um, yeah, I think about 2012 to 2021 anyway. So um, that is a brief background. I do also have a passion for technology that is built for the African continent by African. So I'm actively part of a Sierra Leonean startup that does mapping and surveillance for structures, roads, construction projects, mining, using satellites, drones, and so on. And all of this, the clients can view on a cloud platform. So yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's very interesting to be discussing career here where I feel I'm just scratching the surface and you know, discovering more about what more I can do with myself. So yeah, it's interesting to listen to myself talk and to, to listen to Adora as well. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions as we move forward. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for that. Chema, you made it, your sales director. That's a big, big position. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, so what we'll do next now is just to, if we have any questions um, from the actual participants today, please just pop them in the chat and I'll relay that back to um, our wonderful um, resource people for today. Um, but I have some questions to kickstart um, the conversation. Um, I think I'll just start off with you, with you, Jama, if you don't mind. Yeah, happy with that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, how I think the question that usually comes up um, most times is I know you said you started off with um, what used to be um, what is now Business Sweden that was the, the start of your career yeah? yeah how how did you how did you find out about the opportunity how did you how did you how did you find out about the opportunity I think that's my question was it just so I actually did not know company at the time but what I did was I had a desire to find a job and um, I had shared my CV and this desire to find a job with a lot of my friends who were already in different spaces professionally older friends and uh, one of them told me about the Swedish Trade Council at the time they were looking for an admin assistant um, um, so being young and just looking for a good job, I thought, why not? It was a very small office. Um, I went there, I made a note to show up on time. And little did I know that this is the core cornerstone of the Swedish culture, you have to be on time. But I did show up on time, I think about 20 minutes before I met with the country manager and she was ready to hire me just on that point because everybody else had not shown up on time. Now. Um, 
so I had the interview left and then uh, I think I, I got the job that day. But I, I, I think the point there is I had to put myself out there and identify who can help me find what I need in terms of employment, in terms of pay, in terms of career trajectory. Mind you, at this point, I did not have a plan in terms of what my career direction would be. All of that would develop over the years with experience, with communication and so on. But that was the first experience for me, yeah, to answer your question. <laughs> Very interesting. I think the point you made of not actually, when you are going through uni, Everyone tells you to plan out your life, but it never ever works out the way you plan it. At least for me, and listen to you as well. It's <laughs> things happen over time that sort of pushes you into a direction that you end up going into. Yeah, perfect. That, that's that's very interesting. And finally, for you, uh, when you got the um, your current the job that you got now, the company that you're working with, um, obviously after working with Business Sweden for a while, you said you got headhunted. That for me is, how do you get headhunted? Because usually I think I associate headhunting with years of experience, um, and then obviously you get headhunted. So how did you so, do anything special to get? get so I, I would rephrase. I would rephrase. It wasn't really headhunting. So having worked with Business Sweden at the t Swedish Trade Council, sorry, at the time for about four years. I had built a network and relationship with my, I mean, it's an international company. So like Antonia will tell you, um, we're working with colleagues in Kenya, South Africa, Sweden, sometimes Brazil, depending on what kind of project you are supporting. So um, one of the companies I was supporting with establishing in Nigeria was called Flex Enclosure at the time, a Swedish company. So I was quite, this was my project specifically, and I was interacting very much with the VP and the CEO at the time. And um, this was over a few months. I supported them with figuring out how to establish on the market, identify who their competitors are, what the opportunity is for the product, and also who the right profile of what the right candidate would be for them to hire. And this was a lot of communication back and forth, me expressing what I felt about the people we had interviewed, because there was a lot of face-to-face -face interviews that we did at the time. And um, just at the end of that whole process, Yes, they both said, look, I think we all know, we both know that we want to hire you. And that's exactly how it happened. So this was a direct um, approach from, at the time, the people running the company. So um, yeah, and I was not looking to leave my job. I actually loved my job at the time. Um, so it took some time and also some positive encouragement from my boss at the time who said, look, the relationship between you and your colleagues is not going to end because you leave this job. You have created um, an atmosphere in a way that we will be friends you know, for as long as we know each other and so on. And a lot of these people are still very close friends of mine. I can go to Nairobi today. I know I have my Swedish Trade Council friends. I can be in Stockholm. I would definitely make a note to see my friends there. And um, that's the journey it's been. But specific to joining Flex Enclosure, it was direct from from the CEO and VP at the time, yeah. Perfect, thank you for that. I think you've highlighted the importance of networking and keeping contacts because you never okay. know. Yeah, it is. You're working on a job and you hate the job and you want to burn all the bridges. <laughs> yes, there's yep. no problem in that. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Thank you for that. Um, so I'll move over to Adora. Um, so I know your, your story you gave at the start um, on your journey to um, your current position. Um, was there any planning involved? Because I know you mentioned that as there was um, a method to the apparent madness. Was there any strategy involved? And can you sort of explain how you evolved into your current position? So from law, obviously now into being a, into a technology company, how have you evolved on consultancy? So you had different roles. How did you plan it out? Or was it just a case of when the opportunity came up, you just took it? Um, I, it, was, it was a combination of, of, of both, actually. I was strategic about what I wanted career-wise. Um, to a certain extent, like, like Choma, I actually, my dream was, was to be a diplomat. And um, the compromise I, I made with my parents was that I would study law. 
And I only studied law because I like to read. Uh, so it was, you know, but I did practice and I, I practiced, you know, as a corporate lawyer, which I discovered that I, I, you know, I hated. I absolutely hated. I remember going to, to um, my principal after my second appearance at, in court and begging to please be removed from, from litigation because I, I couldn't stand it. I just, it wasn't for me. But I also was, I was very interested in international affairs. I was fortunate to grow up with a father who worked in, in, in that space. So I, was, I had always been fascinated by that. And like Choma, I, I got a call from a friend one day who said, hey, listen, you know, Ford Foundation is looking for a lawyer. Are you interested? And um, my father had gotten a scholarship to go to Princeton. So I knew from Ford, so I knew what Ford was. So again, I turned up at the, you know, exactly on time and spent about two hours talking to, at that time, the country rep. Um, and at the end of it, he says to me, you know, oh, so, you know, would you be interested in taking this position? Because I'm, I, you know, I'd like to send a message to New York to say, you know, we've got you. And I honestly had to ask, I'm sorry, but what exactly is the job? Because we had talked about everything else except law and I couldn't understand what you know the Ford Foundation were looking for an, an in-house lawyer for but that kind of made me realize that you know the things that I'm interested in really were fundamentally development based issues I was interested in you know in in how the policies are made who the actors were and I saw moving to the Ford Foundation as an opportunity to really get a sense of what um, the non-governmental side of social and, and economic development was like. After that, I made a strategic decision to go to, to do my master's. And I did my master's in international relations, but I had a, a concentration on economic and political development. And I also had a regional concentration because um, I've never really been particularly excited about working abroad. You know, I, I was there for primary school or for, for secondary school or primary and secondary and I and university and I worked there but it wasn't anything you know I, I always wanted to be working on Africa in Africa so I did my regional concentration also on Africa and then um, I got a, an opportunity to work for an international grant making um, of foundation which allowed me to work across Africa Halfway through that, I got a call to come and speak to somebody at the Commonwealth Secretariat about a political advisory job. And I thought, great, this is fantastic because I, I see what the nonprofit sector is doing. To a certain extent, from my legal background, I had some idea what the private sector was doing, but I wanted to know how government worked. How do these decisions get made? What is the infrastructure that, um, channels this you know channels development and what are the blockages because i could see the energy in the in the non-profit sector i knew the energy in the private sector and i wanted to know you know what what's the blockage why aren't these why aren't we hitting the the milestones that we every year we we There's no poverty. set for ourselves yes you know. so you know for me there was always a, a tripod and i had you know i wanted to get the, the experience in that third tripod so there was some strategy about it. Um, I will say that for, for similarly to, to, to Chioma, I have also chosen things that I know that I am passionate about. Hmm. Because I, I, I know very well that when you work in a field or you work in a, in, in a company that you're not particularly um, excited about their mission or, their, or, or what they do. It's just a job, it's just a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly looking, okay, you, know, you don't realize it, but psychologically you, you're not satisfied and you're constantly looking for, for something else. So I was fortunate enough very early to realize that I should pick things that I really, really enjoy. It wasn't the money, it was the experience um, and and I was fortunate to have a family that always told me, do what you love. If you do what you love, you will find you know, the place for yourself. You know, they said the money would come, which was not true. 
<laughs> yeah, in, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that there, there has been a strategy behind it. Um, it has also been from building relationships. It has also been from um, looking outside my immediate space and, and looking at my, what, my career in a 360, with, with a 360 eye view to say, look, you know, I have X skills, I have X experience, what do I need? Not necessarily to, to move my career forward, but what else do I need to know? What else do I need to learn? Um, and you find that with every everything that you add on to that, you know, mm. when you move to the next place, you know, you bring more value. Your value increases. Your your knowledge experience increases. Your your ex, your you enjoy it more because you 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 also have alternate views to what you're doing. Yeah, but I think I'll stop. There. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Just to pick up on one point, I think obviously there's a theme that seems to be to be going now. Obviously, the importance of networking, keeping contacts seems to be the theme. Um, but you mentioned something as well, loving your job, loving what you do, as opposed to just getting a job. Would you say that's a luxury that some people are not afforded? Because yes. so what do you do then? How do you because without having the experience that you had um, in the development sector, you probably would never have known if you would enjoy that as opposed to maybe working in a bank. I think there's two different things. Yeah. I think there are two different things. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't like being a lawyer. Yeah, exactly. But, but I, I, you know, I, I had a network which extended beyond the legal community, which allowed me to... Um, to hear about an opportunity, which took me into something that I knew I would enjoy. Mm. Yeah, um, and then um, I think that that you know, there's a difference between um, you can love your job, and you it, it doesn't necessarily you know, it it doesn't necessarily fulfill you career wise. Mm. You know. Um, I think when you get to the stage where you enjoy what you're doing, then you start to think, okay, what does this mean for me further down the line? Do I see myself doing this in 20 years' time? Do I want to do it in a different space? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that one of the one of the strengths about being able to move, to pivot, um, is really, you know, building out what you enjoy beyond your job. Hmm. Yeah, so the, the, the way I got connected to um, the Ford Foundation was because it was, I'm about to date myself now, but it was <laughs> around the, you know, the time of, um, you know, Abiola had, you know, the, the elections had been annulled and um, people were being arrested and, you know, and somebody had said to me, oh, you're, you're a lawyer, you know, can you come and do some pro bono work for us? And for me, it was civic engagement that I was really excited about. And I remember thinking, gosh, you know, I can't do this for the rest of my life because my parents would say, how can you be a lawyer and not earn money? What is free, you know, free legal advice? But when, when you know, an organization that was looking to build out its human rights um, and justice program was looking for what my friend mistakenly understood to be a lawyer, at that time, she said, "Oh, I know the person. Let me let me you know, ask somebody if she can come and talk to you." Okay. So you know, you can you can still do it. Um, you can do what you you you're not necessarily passionate about, but you will find that when you when you engage more with what you are passionate about, somehow there will be a way to make a living from it. It'll come out of that. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> I think I'm inspired as well. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for that.